Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. I'm Abdul Majid Shirazi and I have my friend Sahil. We are back again with our ongoing series on Surah Kahf. Um, in our last session, we alhamdulillah covered the first 10 uh, verses of Surah Kahf. And uh, today we're going to be starting from uh, verse number 11 onwards, inshallah. Sahil, so I'm going to uh, read uh, the translation of uh, verse number 11. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So we cast a cover of sleep. That's in, this is in brackets, over their ears within the cave for a number of years. Yeah. Then we awakened them that we might show which of the two factions was most precise in calculating what extent they had remained in time. Yeah, no, uh, let's just uh, focus on the, the first ayah, uh, the, okay. the one, the, the, the first one that you recited. Uh, this is a... A very technical word Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used and this is one of the biggest signs of the surah and uh, the word is darabna ala azanihim yes and that, that does not mean cast sleep over their ear yeah that literally means strike their ear yeah or struck their ears yeah and now uh, because in arabic darab, darab means yeah, to yeah. hit yeah. to strike yeah yeah so uh, that's a that's a very very big Opening now. Now this surah is coming to the, to its uh, to the to its core of how how we should look at uh, how to interpret the the signs of uh, how, you know the technology we're talking about. The first uh, uh, questions of the Jews were about the companions of the cave, mm -hmm. and that companion of the cave actually there's something weird that actually happened to the companions of the cave, right? This is what happened to the companion of the cave. This is the very core. Uh, we, we just skip it just like that hmm. and we're not going to get anything. Hmm. This is the most important verse, if not the most important verse, then one of the most important verses. The Rabna ala azanihim means uh, striking the ear. Now, the, the kind of translations that uh, are usually available, that means someone just came in and struck a blow on their ear as if slapped or, or punched. Those people. Now there are not just, just one, not just one man. These, this, these are uh, yeah. this is a group of people. Yeah. So if you have to strike simultaneously seven, eight, nine people, it naturally shows you how you can actually strike the ears of everybody, and yeah. that is how to, and, and that's that's to create a certain sound yeah. that simultaneously hits everybody's ear yeah. exactly in the same way. Yeah. Or seven angels, or an angel with seven copies. Yeah. would strike or punch their, their ear. Yeah. But it makes way more sense to, to interpret it as a sound wave. Because yeah. a sound wave striking the ear would be the Rabbana ala azani. Hmm. And that is how we should actually look into it. That there was a certain sound that uh, was uh, created in the cave when they were there. So that they would, uh, and you know, Furthermore, we will see during the, the next few verses because this, this is the most exciting part of the, the surah. Mm. And this is why I need you to just focus on this for as long as we can uh, so that we can actually try and get the actual sense and the flavor <coughs> and the, 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 the technology we're talking about here. So when we say that we are, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala struck their, ear, their ears, that's 14 ears minimum. That's yeah. seven minimum. Could be yeah. nine, could be more, yeah. could be hundreds for all we know. Yeah. So, because uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says only Allah knows how many of them there are. So as minimum as seven or nine. Or, or. Yeah. So that's, that's a sound wave that actually hit them and they all fell asleep right away. Yeah. Or because I'm, what I'm saying, why I'm saying right away is just is because it's not just one man. Yeah. Seven people. Yeah. One man just steadily dozing off would be uh, another man's, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, experience. Yeah. He would see the f the rest exactly. of the two, three people just exactly. falling down. And would that be able happened. to recount what happened. Yeah, yeah, and he would be able to recall and tell everybody that this is yeah. what happened, but yeah. they didn't find that out. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this is this is how we should look into uh, how to. Uh, uh, really interpret this this uh, technicality of what actually happened and how it happens uh, Sahil, how time I don't know if happens. it's appropriate to quote it here but there's a movie 
I think Jimmy Carter or something something Carter uh, on the subject of time travel and I think in that movie they have shown this concept where something happens to the ears of the the, the person in that which makes him time travel to another planet or something well there could be because and uh, secondly there are certain theories we, yeah, there theories are. we say is that portals or this traveling oh. through dimensions open have something to do with sound waves resonance yeah, yeah something resonance, uh, yeah. resonating frequency uh, and there are a lot of theories of a certain <coughs> frequency yeah. at which uh, the the atmosphere will open its door towards wherever that that, yeah. that door will lead you and you know what quite frankly i wouldn't really think or we can't just you know uh cast them all out because yeah, this exactly. literally this is quran we're talking about here yeah, yeah. so when the quran says darabna uh, ala azanihim which means uh, uh, something did happen through the course of sound waves yeah and these guys not just fell asleep because they didn't really fall asleep fall asleep yeah you'll find out later on that uh, it was a totally different kind of uh, state that these guys were in yeah. because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala later on says that if you had seen them you would have thought that they're awake Yeah. This is a very big I mean, we'll come to that later yeah, on. Yeah. So this is something else that happened to the sound wave to to to, yeah. to these people. Yeah. And uh you know, did their you know, bodies just scatter up? Yeah. Uh or 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 did they just fall down or did they just stood still and just were frozen into whatever state that they were in? Uh even though Allah Taala says they were laid down. Yeah, so they yeah. they did lie down <coughs> or or the way Allah Taala says later on and you'll find out that they were laid down yeah but it can also be taken as that they, there are two states of these people in which yeah. one state is how they're laying down and the other state is something which is not uh, in the in the, in, the, in the state of lying down uh we'll, we'll come down to, to that okay. so but the, the point on this verse is that it is so so clear that something happened to their ear ears yeah now if you look at the uh, internal structure of the ear yeah you'll find out a certain shape yeah the human anatomy of the internal ear yeah uh let's just take it from the external side yeah. this certain shape yeah it's a very clear shape that actually is in a kind of a spiral it's a spiral yeah, yeah. So, so yeah let's just assume that people know what a spiral is everything in the heavenly cosmos yeah. is in a spiral motion yeah, yeah. everything yeah. Uh, we think that the, the earth is revolving around the sun yeah. even though the sun is also in motion yeah. the earth is not revolving around the sun like They're that earth is actually together are going yeah yeah it's a spiral going up yeah yeah uh, or going down yeah. the matter yeah. yeah and you know the fabunachi series out yeah. uh, is is very very eloquently talking about uh, how the 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 signature of yeah creation and probably you mentioned in some of your other videos where that uh, the structure of a, a warm hole or a black hole yeah, or I'll a portal that, uh, can that's, be like that's what I'm coming at yeah is in this very surah that really real word is used subhanallah okay the word sadaf the actual manifestation of the 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 spiral and the 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 fibonacci numbers yeah when we when we we know we, when we see that we actually no you know to know uh, the fibonacci through a a a a seashell or 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 a shell and this is the word sadaf that is used in surah kaf and that's mm. the word used for uh the the portal uh, or the way through which uh you know uh you can actually or you know it's presumably so travel mm. Mm. through uh, it's, it's like a gateway mm. from one dimension or the other or one mm. part uh, of the universe <coughs> it could be anything but that word itself sort of yeah that spiral that that uh, that little wormhole is inside our ear that's a physical part of our body that literally looks like a seashell yeah yeah Now, i guess anyone can just google and see yeah, the internal please, structure uh, yeah. of the ear and you can see you'll that see that, that that seashell inside our, our body every human ear especially for cochlear something uh uh Yeah, yeah, well there she has to be, but uh the the real question is that shape uh can, is not a coincidental shape. There are no yeah. coincidences. And that is a very big, very big uh uh opening towards this this whole realm of how how one being can actually 
you know, play Travel. around with time, mm -hmm. maybe dimensions or whatever. And that also leads, uh, since it's inside the ear, that yeah. leads to how sound can actually be one of the tools too, uh, to utilize. Yeah. And I, I must process. clear one point here, like it's not that we are verifying Quran through science, but it's actually we have to verify Diverse. science yeah, through yeah, the Quran. Yeah, the, the, the other like way around. If we are yeah. talking about multiverse or many worlds at this time, in, in fact, like Muslims were supposed to be the first people to talk about these things because the first, first ayah starts with Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So we always had the concept of Alameen. We always had the concept of seven earths many skies so we verify science through this yeah, yeah. and this yeah. is a very good indication for scientists look into this to uh, to see what sound can do and it literally <coughs> shows in the surah that sound can do uh, can because do, yeah. it is a matter of sound we're talking yeah, about here yeah, yeah. so the rabbana ala azanihim means plural uh, at the same time they were all struck and uh, when we hear this word the rabbana ala azanihim naturally uh, we can actually, you know, uh, infer that uh, it was a sound that was struck uh, simultaneously in all of the ears of those people. Okay, so then we woke them so that we could make clear which of the two parties was better able to work out how long they had been there. Now that this verse actually shows two, two different things. One, it's a clear account uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us it's a very clear way of narrating a story for the future people like us to know who was right and who was wrong. And the second thing is of what happens at an experiential level. This is what Allah Ta'ala is telling us. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala literally tells us their experience in their own words so that we would know of how it actually feels. Yeah. It is such a big way, such an amazing way of narrating a story. Yeah. That uh, you know that you know as 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 as, uh, as as humanly it could have been defined. Uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala did that for us. That two parties yeah. started arguing. Of how yeah. long did you think we were asleep? Yeah. And uh, both of the parties, you know, gave their accounts. Yeah. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying that uh, in in literally in his ayah that you know then we made them argue against each other over, over uh, who was right and who was wrong in you know in understanding or recalling what was the actual span of their sleep okay so now i'm going to keep reading on and you have to stop me where you have to make a point so it's this is uh, verse number 13 prophet we shall tell you their story as it really was they were young men who believed in their lord and we gave them more and more guidance we gave strength to their hearts when they stood up and said, Our Lord is the Lord of the heavens and earth. We shall never call upon any God other than Him, for that would be an outrageous thing to do. Uh, this is a, a very clear uh, uh, <coughs> understanding, as, as basic as it gets when it comes down to Islam, that uh, guidance is only going to come through uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly, directly, without any intervention of any angel. Guidance is a direction and an, and an amr of Allah. Uh, and whoever Allah guideth is going to be saved. And this is what Allah Ta'ala is saying in the time of Dajjal. Uh, there won't be no uh, argumentation or, or, or you know, uh, uh, convincing of anyone any, uh, or, or, or anything. It is a choice of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to guide whoever He wills. And if we are going to help as much as we can to make that psychology clear to our, our younger lot, the future generations. Uh, it'll be easier for them to be on the, on the right path where Allah is going to have mercy on them and pick them as the, the righteous people. Because these, this, this is an ayah which is saying very clearly that Allah chose them. Yeah. They didn't choose Allah, Allah chose them. This is I think there's a, one point I would like to make here is that our aqidah is that Allah guides everyone is people who have to make themselves eligible for that guidance. So whoever tries sincerely, Allah definitely will choose them. And yeah. whoever That's deliberately what I meant by the, denies. The right path in psychology. Yeah. That's what yeah. I want. We have to make it easy for our generations to come. Yeah. To, to not be burdened by mutated psychology and you know, going into full-on argumentation before they can actually believe. We should believe before we argue. 
Yeah. And that's exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that Zalik al Kitabu la Rai Bifi. So, uh, or uh, uh, in Surah Baqarah, in this very verse, Allah is saying that this is a book which uh, guided the Muttaqeen. Yeah. So, Muttaqeen uh, are the people who are going to be guided. This yeah. is something which we can connect with this ayah and we yeah. can clearly see that if we can develop taqwa as a psychology of our, our kids, then they will be guided, inshallah. 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 Uh, so, you know, <coughs> this is not a, a debate of qadr al qadr. Yeah. Uh, this is just a debate of what is the responsibility of the parents to help uh, them get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sure. Because the Jali is going to open the, uh, the door of argumentation. There is no doubt about this. All the hadith are saying that. He is presenting proofs and arguments and justifications and you know this and that. And people are, who are going to fall prey... Uh, I'll give you a little hadith here uh, so that you can understand in, uh, in the end of time Allah's Prophet says that whoever is going to look into the fitan, the intensity of the fitan is going to be so much that whoever is going to look into the fitan will fall prey to the fitan. This is such a, such a big thing. So you have to understand in the next ayah which you just recited, the last one, uh, these are the people who just, you know, uh, believe and have faith that there is no deity except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no God, but one God. And uh, this was enough for them to, uh, to be guided. They stood firm. They were in the time where most of the people had lost their faith and belief. These are the only few people who were left. And instead of fighting the billions of people, well, millions in their case, uh, but billions in the Jal case, uh, instead of just trying to argue and trying whatever, do whatever, they made sure that their iman is safe. And uh, after a certain point in time, these people gave up and they just fled. They literally fled because uh, uh, there was no other choice. SubhanAllah. These people of ours have taken gods other than him. Why do they not produce clear evidence about them? Who could be more unjust than someone who makes up lies about God? Uh, well, that's the wrong word. <coughs> who could be more uh, zalim? Faman azlam, women karaba. Yeah. The, who is the biggest of the biggest tyrant and the you know the wrongdoer oppressor uh, yeah. the oppressor uh, and that is the guy who actually you know puts forth lies on the deity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah. this is an ayah which repeats so many times in the Quran and this is where these people are saying that why are they putting lies on Allah and this is where the Prophet said in the time of the Dajjal so that we will understand that this man is going to claim to be the Lord and no matter in the shape of Jesus or not that the Prophet said, your Lord is not one-eyed. Okay, your Lord is not one-eyed. That means this man is going to be claiming the Lord. And this is what these people are saying that, uh, why are you associating anyone else with God, which the child is going to do? And or, and or, even if he just claims to be Lord, with, in, in, instead of just claiming to be Isa al uh, these people are, people of the cave are saying that, فَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ كَذَبَ who is a bigger uh, oppressor or wrongdoer than a guy who uh, puts, is putting forth lies on uh, the deity of Allah? Which means anyone who claims to be a lie is one of the, the people who is addressed here. Now that you have left such people and what they worshipped instead of God, take refuge in the cave. God will shower His mercy on you and make you an easy way out of your ordeal. Uh, the Prophet also said that, that at the end of times, head towards the mountains, head towards the mountains and uh, flee from uh, the Jal. So these are the people who are doing that. This is, a, uh, this is such an amazing uh, story uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying and the Prophet is saying, Surah Kaf will save you from the Jal. That literally, you know, literally uh, shows of why, how relevant this Surah is in the time of the Jal. You could have seen the light of the sun as it rose moving away to the right of their cave and when it set moving away to the left of them while they lay in the wide space inside the cave. This is one of God's signs. Okay, this is in the brackets. This is one of God's signs. Those people of uh, people God guides are rightly guided, but you will find no protector to lead to the right path those he leaves to stray. In the last, uh, uh, in this ayah, the last few words, it's moving away to the left no, of no, them. In the, in no. Arabia. Okay. This is uh, in the last part. وَمَنْ يُضْلِلْ فَلَنْ تَجِدَ لَهُ وَلِيَّمْ مُرْشِدًا Before that. Okay. 
I'm going to read the whole uh, ayah. Okay. What are the shams? I thought I had to say, 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 I thought I had So, uh, the three things in this <coughs> ayah very clearly. First and foremost, it is such an amazing way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has literally given us the blueprint of uh, that portal through which these people were, you know, traveling through time. Uh, now, if you use the basic two-dimensional paper and pencil or three-dimensional structures, you are not going to be able to uh, construct this sort of structure. Because uh, when Allah ta'ala says uh, uh, anything, Anything which Allah Ta'ala is referring to as min ayatullah, that is not an ordinary thing. If you can see that in the Quran, whenever something extraordinary, weird, strange, which is happening, and Allah Ta'ala is actually describing it, Allah Ta'ala is saying this is an ayatullah, which means this is something which you won't be able to explain through regular mechanisms which yeah. you have developed through whatever science or, or prior to science which we were doing. Now, if you actually plot through a pencil and paper the structure, uh, you will not be able to do that because when the sun is rising, Tala, yeah. when the sun is rising, it, it and if we put that, uh, put a, any structure on, 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 on the plane and then move the sun away or towards the right, yeah. then we are naturally, naturally moving uh, towards the left as well. Yeah. And this is uh, why this becomes one of the most strange structures. You really cannot do that. And trust me, I've tried many times. You uh, have to have a very peculiar structure for a sun to move towards, move away from the right when it's rising and move away towards the left when it's setting. In a 2D model, you cannot put a structure uh, mm. or create a structure in your mind. You have to put that structure in, air, in the air somehow or uh, inside a certain dimension where the earth is moving uh, or the sun is moving away when it's setting because yeah. or when it's uh, sorry uh, when it's rising, rising towards the right because if you actually justify or or fulfill one of the conditions hmm. of any structure from which the sun moves away when it's rising then you are not going to be able to make the sun move away towards the left when it's setting yeah it is not mathematically possible for a structure to have a sun moving away towards the right in the ascent and still make it move away towards the left when it's descending. Ascending. This is why it's the ayat. Okay. Ay ay this, ayatullah. The translator here has added uh, in brackets light of the sun. So he says. Well, I don't know why he did that. No, because I have uh, two points to make here. Yeah. Uh, if you move light towards a prism light bends or through a thicker the denser medium light does bend so if it's not about the sun or and it's only about the light then probably that cave was in a certain dimension which acted maybe as a prism Could so be. that the light <laughs> bent in another direction it it, it moves away it. away from its light you're right that's the only and way then to explain it. there's another explanation like about the black holes we know that when the light uh, hits uh, comes in the path a black hole comes in the uh, path of the light the light curves <coughs> bends, above yeah. the black hole <coughs> and bends around it and then goes away so even there we can see this phenomena where the light is moving away from the point is coming from that's true yeah but this is on planet earth these yeah. are regular human beings who ran but the structure of the black hole like uh, as yeah, i compared I it with the prism you know any thicker medium that's true that's will true. bend the light that's true but Whatever we're saying, yeah. it's not normally placed in the, yeah. uh, you know, we don't, we yeah. can, not every cave is like this. Yeah. Actually, no, no cave that we've ever seen is like yeah. this. Yeah. And if we are to move the sun away to, towards the right of any structure, we'll have to go outside the planet for the sun to move away while yeah. it's setting yeah. towards the left. Yeah. So, but that didn't happen outside this planet or did yeah. it? Yeah. Or did it? That's the real question we have to ask because this is such an amazing uh, key that if we use this key and build a, a lock around this key, 
you'll find out that that lock is going to happen to be a gateway towards many many dimensions if not different universes hmm. so this is uh, this is one of the most interesting uh, ways and i don't know how the scholars have commented on uh, this because uh, uh let me just you know show it to you here if 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 this is the cave and the sun rises here it is moving towards the cave when it's rising so the sun has to be moving away from towards the the right yeah when it's rising yeah. so you're putting the cave behind the sun when it's yeah. rising yeah so that's technically not possible yeah. so let's just say that the cave is uh, uh facing north yeah okay and if it's facing north and the sun is rising from the east it is not moving away it's moving still, towards yeah. okay if i put it in, in the south still the sun is not moving away yeah anything on the planetary plane when the sun rises the sun is moving towards them yeah it's not moving away from them yeah so we lose it right there yeah i i don't know how how we actually reconcile all of this and yeah. what kind of structure are we looking at so let's just assume that there is a tiny little spot which is a structure of course and there's a mountain and then the sun rises like this we we i i do not know how to to make the sun move away from the right let's assume that we do do that that this is just uh, the shadow or or the sunlight is moving the light yeah. then all of a sudden you cannot reverse the condition of that very light moving towards uh, away from the left when the sun is going to set yeah so this is where the the mind baffles and uh, i'm sure there's an explanation uh if we assume a lot of other uh you know uh dimensions yeah. and then uh, make the sun light if not the sun behave like that but this mm. word does not mean sunlight mm. it literally means sun yeah so we can't just first and foremost just extrapolate the meaning of sunlight out of this word because it does yeah. not say sunlight yeah so uh, that would be that would be a little far fetched just to use but i light. think because the translator has inserted it in the bracket so probably they have must this have taken a, it from somewhere from the translation because uh, he also inserted the signs of allah into bracket yeah. as well i don't know yeah. why he did that because it's, it's it's a black and white word yeah that's abdul halim by the way yeah why would he do that <laughs> you know what i'm saying this is i think let's not talk about the scholars here Um, I didn't know. Yeah. I did not. You did. Well, what are they I doing? I said this song. <laughs> I love Abdul Halim. That's the only scholar I actually recommend to people. But yeah. why would he do that? Yeah. It's a it's an actual word. Yeah, we can't oh just put God. the word in the bracket. Probably we can move on from here and yeah. ask Abdul Halim if we, yeah, we ever should. get a chance we inshallah. Should. Okay. <clears throat> about the prism thing i guess we're going to discuss that yeah let's just Why? Uh, because, let's tell uh, you what the prism works there is a prism I- imagine you have to put a, the prism behind the cave no, 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 just, just give me a minute if, the, if there's a cave here and this is acting as a prism or there's a prism here yeah whenever the light comes That's here it mean. doesn't hit it it moves, moves away. away when the sun is here it the moves prism away. is moving yeah away. that's true that's exactly what i mean behind the uh, or around yeah. the cave yeah. there was a prism of some sort and it could be yeah. could be a layer of whatever <clears throat> medium that just did envelop the whole cave yeah and that did not make the 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 light enter the cave just mm-hmm. like that and actually you know diffuse sunlight didn't yeah, and i don't know why i'm using the word prism because prism breaks the light into different colors probably any denser material any denser yeah, medium yeah i get what yeah. you're saying yeah Okay inshallah yeah, so, so move it's on a, it's a, it's a, it's a very interesting very interesting matter yeah so you would have thought they were awake though they were they lay asleep we turned them over to the right and left with their dog stretching out its four legs at the entrance if you had seen them you would have turned and run away filled with fear of them well if you read all of the uh translations which i do you'll find a very weird word that most of the muslim scholars have used to translate this word that you would have turned in turned back in flight with an l i don't know why they use that or maybe they were on the same line that i i was thinking but if you look at all the translations in english and you'll be then you'll be amazed that more than 80% of all the translators use the phrase you would have turned back in flight yeah sahi international says the same f l i g h t yeah. that's not a phrase of english if you had looked at them you would have turned from them in flight 
yeah. and being filled I can by understand them with they say fright, but that is redundant because the terror word is later on. Yeah. Ajaba. Uh, Roaba. So, the, the real thing is that why, why are Muslim scholars using the word flight? That's, a, that's something which really astonished me at times. Because it's not just one guy. Yeah. It's just about most of the people who are using the word flight. Wow. So that's why we just have to refer to the, the whole of, of the meanings of every word of Arabi here. And if we can actually just, just uh, the first part of the, the ayah. Let me just, just break it up for you. The Arabic? Uh, yeah, just the first part. من الشيطان الرجيم. وتحسبهم أيقاظا وهم رقود ونقلبهم ذات اليمين وذات الشمال وكل. Yeah, that's not. That means, uh, see now, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying that He laid them down. That's the word that that that, that you know. The, 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 if you can just read the English now, so that let's just break it into three parts. And you would think them awake while they were asleep. Yeah. Now, this is a very common sense thing. Yeah. Seven people who are not moving are laying down on the ground. Who would think that they're asleep or, uh, sorry, awake? Why would anyone assume that they're awake if they're laying down on the floor, not moving? Wow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That means... Either they're dead or they're sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. In that position. Yeah. yeah. That means, you know, it's a far fetched thing to just go, oh, yeah, I can just go in and look at their eyes and their eyes are open. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that, that's not a scary sight. Yeah. Plus, there's no sunlight coming in. So, probably th it wasn't even that much light inside. That yeah. You could see the if, eyes. If there are no sunlight, then nobody's going to get scared. Yeah. Because you cannot see anything in pitch yeah. black. But I don't get scared when I see people. And I, even if I do get scared, I'm too, too much of a weak heart. But. I am not going to be terrified by looking at seven people lying down on the floor. Yeah. That literally means that these people were not lying down because it does say lying down. But if we had seen them, we would not have seen them lying down. Hmm. Now, now, with this perspective, read the translation again. Now try and understand what I'm saying here and then you'll understand why the word terror is used. And you think... From the beginning and, of this ayah. And you would think them awake while they were asleep and would turn them to the right and to the left while their dog stretched his four legs at the entrance. If you had looked at them, you would have turned from them in flight and been filled by them with terror. Yeah, why? See? Well, I have a point here. Yeah. The point here is uh, um, the beings and the objects in a smaller dimension cannot imagine how is it going to be in a higher dimension. But the higher dimensional beings can see how the smaller dimensional beings look or the objects. For example, uh, a, an object in 1D can only see a dot or a line of a 2D object, in a, of an object in a 2D, or a 2D one an object in a two-dimensional space, if looks at the three-dimensional object, will only see two lines. Similarly, we cannot see anything of the fourth dimension. We can only see them in the weirdest, unimaginable shape. There are computer softwares that yeah, try to attempt to create a fourth dimension, and then they show the same object first in the 3D graphics, then they try to see, show the same object in the four dimensional. So it's a computer simulation. But there's a video on the YouTube. Uh, I would recommend you watch it. There's a, there's a human three dimensional head. And uh, the, the graphic designer, whoever is playing around with it, he shows it into, in the first uh, in 1D and then 2D and then 3D, rotates the whole camera around the human head. As soon as he inserts a fourth dimension into the simulation, that whole head twists, breaks into a very weird, the computer doesn't understand what's it doing, you know? And that head is not even recognizable, you know? So, yeah, but that doesn't it's fit a here. very weird thing. It doesn't fit here because... No, why I'm saying here is, if they had entered into a higher dimension where there was a time difference with the time of the Earth, then definitely if you look at them, to you, they'll be the weirdest things ever. I understand that, but that does not fit the meaning of the first part of this ayah. If I look at a four-dimensional human being, I will be scared. Yeah. But I'm not going to think he's awake. He's awake or asleep, yeah. 
Yeah. Understand? Yeah. Probably that's, their shape wouldn't be even yeah. recognizable. Yeah. That's yeah. the least of my worry at that time. Whether yeah. he's awake or asleep, yeah. I won't be okay. able to think whether he's a human being or not. Yeah. Yeah. So that is where the key is. Yeah. The key is. So you can see them asleep, but yet they are scary enough to scare you away. You can see them that there are people who are awake. Yeah. Awake. Yeah. Yeah. Why would? See, this is the real key. The difference between a, a guy who's awake and a guy who's asleep is maybe he's sitting down or walking versus yeah. a guy who's lying down. Yeah. That's one. The other difference is two guys who are lying down, one has an eyes open, one does not. Yeah. Okay, let's just keep it to a simpler scenario. Yeah. If you were to see them, they were awake, that means that, you know, their eyes are open. Yeah. Uh, and the third one is that, you know, if a person is, even if he's lying down, but he's moving around, then people think he's awake. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I, and I don't really just, uh, I just, my mind does not really, f you know, think that it's all about just the eyes opening or not. Because, you know, that's something which, which does not really scare anybody. Yeah. Because yeah. we have to look both of the, 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 the aspects here. Yeah. That yeah. The first thing is that it's a sleep and awake thing. Yeah. And they're definitely going to be seen awake and then it'll be terrifying sight. Yeah. It's absolutely terrifying. You've been mm -hmm. running the uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you would have fled. Yeah. You would have run from terror. You know what I'm saying? This yeah. is this is the exact word. So understand how important this concept is. You have to understand that it has to be a terrifying sight yeah. of somebody who's actually awake. Yeah. Okay? It does say minhum firaram. Firaram, yeah. yeah. Firaram means yeah. you would have run. Yeah. You would have just run with terror. Hmm. Now, why would anybody run with terror when he looks at seven awake people sitting down together? Or maybe sleeping or I don't know. standing yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Even if somebody's lying down, then that's the least probability of an audience getting terrorized. Yeah. Because psychologically speaking, a guy who's lying down is the least of the threatening uh, yeah. state. Yeah. Uh, for all we know. That's, yeah. you know, that's, that's how the cops make you lie down and stuff. Yeah, 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 for sure. So if I'm walking around and I see a bunch of people lying down and a bunch of people are, who, are, who, are, who, are, who are standing up and then another bunch of people who are not just standing up, who are running and then the last bunch of people who are running towards me. Now the scariest side is the, the bunch who's running towards me Least scary is the size of the people who just lying oh, down. Lying down, yeah. And I'm considering all of them as awake right now. Yeah. All of them are awake. Yeah. And the least of them all would be that people who are awake, but I can't see them uh, whether they're awake or not. But that's not the condition here. Yeah. Okay. So now understand psychologically speaking, this is a totally different state. Definitely not lying down. Or even if they are lying down. They are very visibly showing those signs of being awake, which means they're moving mm -hmm. about or they're maybe they're just, you know, because the ayah says, you know, we're just shifting tossing them from left them, and yeah. we're tossing them. And it, the word does not say tossing. Mm. It just says moving left or right. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So we, we, can't, we, we have to be really careful as to how uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes that, that, that mm -hmm. toss. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is something which is, uh, which is another <laughs> one of those... <laughs> Amazing, amazing ways of Allah. It says nukallibhum is qalb. Qalb means constantly changing. So that al yamini wa that al shimal. Yeah, it doesn't mean that you mean they're tossing while they're sleeping. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, even though commentaries all over the world are saying that an angel is just, you know, shifting their, 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 their angle while they're asleep. Mm. And uh, when, if they're asleep, you know, they're going to actually have a body. Uh, uh, body ache, sores, uh, yeah. sores, and not just sores, but since there's uh, this 300 plus years we're talking about, so it's <laughs> a lot more than just sores. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so this is something which is uh, which is the most interesting part about how this is happening. First, the strike on the ear, you know, and and then and they're know, sleeping but still awake. They're sleeping but awake, and they're and in the a terrifying is, state. Yeah. And, and then they are yeah, and being it's very turned and on it's, the left it's and very, right. uh, the, 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 the verse before that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, one party is arguing with the other party. And that the <coughs> biggest sign, biggest sign, which I missed out, I'm sorry, was the fact that no party, none of those two parties said that I think we've been asleep for more than 100 years because, man, your beard is about six feet long, your nails are out, and, you know, you're, 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 you got gray hair, man, and you look like a skeleton. Nobody yeah. said that. <laughs> yeah. Because 
Because if somebody's <laughs> asleep for more than a year, yeah. he's not going to wake up and say, hey, you know what? I just slept for a day or maybe two. Because yeah. his, his anatomy is going to change. Yeah. And that is the, the, the sign of time travel. That's the sign of time stagnation. That's the time of dimension. That's the sign of uh, dimensions or portals or whatever you want to call it. But that's definitely time travel because these people stayed in their current state through the ways Allah is describing. And that's a very ter ter terrifying sight to see. And the technology is used as sound. And uh, the proof of this is all over this. These three, four ayahs, in the yeah. shortest possible way, Allah Ta'ala has narrated a story yeah. in which uh, He's given to us. Uh, and it doesn't really take a big thinker to understand this. It's so yeah. simple. And uh, this is why Allah Ta'ala's uh, wisdom, uh, you can see that He wrote the very verse that uh, is an account of one party talking about how much time they slept yeah. for. And that's the real value of that verse. And that's how, how important that verse is. Yeah, there's one point I have to make here because we've been using the word time travel a lot. So generally the time travel means being able to traverse the time backwards or forwards. Means going in the past or going in the future. But here we can see that this scenario may be only traveling into another dimension. Might not be a time travel. No, no. it is definitely time travel because they're mm. going to come out and find out that they've traveled to the future. Yeah, but if they were staying in a dimension where there was a time difference with the Earth, even then the same thing is going to happen. Still time. So it doesn't travel. mean that they turn into future or the past. No, but that's what I'm saying actually because time travel is seen mostly, mainly. No, but in this they did time travel to the future. They went outside and they found out that uh, you know. Oh yeah, finally they did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, they did. how yeah. they've traveled it could yeah. be an interdimensional or interplanetary movement. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. Uh, but it's not the fact... You see, the, there's so many clarities in this. It's not ambiguous at all because they stayed in the cave. Yeah. yeah. That's why Allah says, if you had seen them, you yeah. were run with terror. Exactly. You that's know? what. Uh, that's the point I was trying to make actually, that they did not travel in the future or the past while they were in the cave. Only once they were awake, they found out that they are in the future. This means that they yeah, did they travel did to the travel, future. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, the fact that their bodies didn't change makes them a time traveler. Yeah. The fact that, you know, because the angel was not giving them a shave. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or even dyeing their color, uh, hair yeah. color. Or, or preserving their clothes, yeah. or their muscles, or their or skin. No, no, no. Yeah. It was done through this, this, this way. This most giving them nutrition way. through the ivy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this is this is not something which yeah. is. Uh, and also the, uh, the the word is a wide space, wide space, wide space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the they cave, slept yeah. in a wide space. Yeah. So that actually factors out that video of the cave of the you know uh, <laughs> in Jordan where they give you a. Uh, a tour of the people of the cave because yeah. there's no white space there. Oh my God, that's like the, the smallest possible thing that you could possibly find out yeah. when they give you that tour. And you, if you people who've gone to that that that, that cave, which is known as the the, the actual cave of Asabe Kaf, you'll find out that that's uh, that there's no white space for seven people just like that. Hmm. It's, it's, it's it's a small of a compartment that they've actually managed to dig up somehow, and. Uh, this is why I think it was somewhere else and it was such a big event that Jews came to the Prophet and asked about him. If it were just so evident, <laughs> Prophet would have directed it or they wouldn't have been able to ask it as an enchanting story. Okay? So this is a very, very big, very big do uh, eye-opener, a, a door towards understanding that uh, uh, the choice of words Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used is so so beautiful that it just it is speaking to us yeah. it is opening the door of technology and that technology yeah. and travel and uh, you know the way time is travel and what happens how scary it is to look at and uh, what kind of situation a man is going through when he's you know traversing through time in hundreds of years and uh, how it happens to your ear uh, or at least one of those ways and, um, you know, this is why it becomes the most important surah in the Quran in terms of uh, this sort of, uh, you know, technology. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so... Okay, uh, but one, one last thing. Mm -hmm. This also shows that Dajjal, when he's going to go through a hundred year of a day, 
Yeah. His one day is going to be a hundred years. This is uh, exactly what happened because one party says maybe a day or half a day. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. But it was 300 days, uh, yeah. 300 years. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, it shows as to how, how uh, you know, these things can be done. And the fact that these were not prophets, so if the Jal does that, does not make him a prophet. That's the yeah. first take from this. Wow. Hmm. So, uh, so, you know, just, uh, just a little heads up for, because there's a lot more coming. You just started the story of the people of the cave. Okay. <clears throat> and similarly, we awakened them and they might question one another. Said a speaker from among them, how long have you remained here? They said, we have remained a day or a part of a day. They said, your Lord is most knowing of how long you remained. So send one of you with this silver coin of yours to the city and let him look to which is the best of food and bring you provision from it and let him be cautious and let no one be aware of you. There you go. So that's literally the signs of uh, what kind of play, uh, you know, uh, situation um, believers are going to be in the time of the Uh However, you know this. This is what I was referring to. Uh, the, the the party says day or part of a day. Yeah. That means their body did not change. Yeah. Nothing changes. If I sleep right now, I'm going to wake up. I'm not going to have an inch of of of, of uh, an indicator anything, yeah. that is going to show me that I slept for a hundred and some years. And yeah. the fact that it was a cave and not a building was such an amazing choice because the caves. Do not change their state over 100 and 300 years. And uh, even wow. if, yeah, any any other thing, you know, if it wow. were a forest, <laughs> it would have been a totally different forest if they were waking up. Yeah. So it had to be under some ground yeah. in a stone structure, which lasts for more than a, a state of that structure lasts for hundreds and hundreds of years without any visible change. Yeah. Otherwise, if they were in a forest and one party asked, how, how long would you think we were asleep? He would be like, hey, you know what, when we came back, when we were asleep, yeah. uh, when we f were trying to fall asleep, there were so many trees here. Yeah. And now you can There's see that th jungle. this is a big jungle. Yeah. This is a forest or there's nothing here. We fell asleep in a jungle. Yeah. There are buildings around us. Yeah. So uh, and this is why the yeah. privacy of the whole thing is just a secondary concept. The primary concept is the fact that it was a choice of uh, a, a, a settlement which does not change its uh, anatomy over hundreds and hundreds of years. That's and enough. that's also one of the signs that uh, a thing which does not change its states over time is a, the best place to travel through time because uh, they, that place did last the test of time. Yeah. So this is something which is... Uh, a little philosophical. Probably, it's, if it's a door to going somewhere, it's the do door f f for to come back. So that well. the door so would if remain. If it changes, yeah, because so you won't have the, the door. Way back. Yeah, the door. Yeah. Wow. So these, this is why caves and stones, because they don't change their shape. Yeah. And that door or gateway is going to last as long as the stone is going to last. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So the. Last ayah for today, ayah number 20. Indeed, if they come to know of you, they will stone you or return you to their religion and never would you succeed then ever. There you go. That's exactly what the Prophet said. If you fight him, you're going to lose. Yeah. That's a Dajjal. Now, if you think this is the verse at the time of Dajjal and then you recite the translation, let's assume that Dajjal is out there. Yeah. Okay, and then you recite. You and I are ta talking to each other. Yeah. We're hiding somewhere in the cave, and the jaw is out there. And if you recite the verse in English, this is how the feel and psychology should be. Indeed, if they come to know of you, they will stone you or return you to their religion. <laughs> and never would you succeed then ever. This is exactly a uh, verbatim of all of the future people who are going to be f uh, hiding from a Dajjal. And if someone said, hey, you know what, I'm going to be a smart aleck. And I'm going to try and do something. The other people are going to let's be like, have a dialogue. Let's yeah, have a yeah. Debate let's with talk him. about this. Yeah. I have an argument. I'm going to show him from the Quran. And I'm going to show him from a Hadith. No, no, no. Oops. The Prophet himself said that he's going to stone you or force you into his religion or kill you or whatever. This is why just just flee and uh, keep it a secret. Your iman should be in hiding at that time. 
Subhanallah. Thank you very much, Sahil. Inshallah. Inshallah. In our uh, next program, we'll come with the next 10 ayahs of uh, Surah Al-Kahf. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.